Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Carolyn Becker. Thank you very much, President Alberg. Um, I'd like to start by first um, congratulating our graduates and all of those who have supported you all through the years. Um, today is a celebration of your remarkable accomplishments, and I hope that you will take time today to reflect on all that has brought you here. Now, one of the things you may have discerned over the past four years is that faculty like nothing better than to give you advice. And this appears to be our last chance before your contact with us becomes significantly more optional. <laughs> Thus, I'd like to offer a few parting suggestions for you to take on the road. Now, I should note that my advice is not focused on what you should do as you go forward. In my opinion, the options are too vast, the world too complex, and you are too diverse a class for me to be able to do that with any chance of success. Rather, I would like to offer you eight suggestions for what not to do post-graduation. The nice thing about my giving you a number on this is you won't wonder, have to wonder how far along I am in my talk at any given point, and you'll be able to predict when it's going to end. Now, this may seem an odd direction to take, but identifying what paths are best avoided is an important problem-solving problem skill, and as a behavioral psychologist, I'm all about problem-solving. For instance, in my own field, I may not know the best option for solving the obesity crisis, but I'm pretty sure that throwing more sugar at the problem isn't going to help. I think of this as drawing your own map and identifying where the monsters and dead ends lay, so you can focus your resources on charting the best course. As an aside, I expect you as Trinity graduates to be able to get over and around any sort of regular obstacle. So the first item on my not recommended after graduation list is give in to pressure to be like everybody else. Being able to march to the beat of your own drummer is an important component of building your own life in a way that is worth living. This is difficult, though, in a world that likes conformity. Your dreams may not fit with those around you, but they are, make, they are what make you who you are. Many great things in our world were built by dreamers who refused to give in to pressures from others to quit. Now, having said that, and I should note that as a behavioral psychologist, I have no trouble giving you completely contradictory advice. I recommend that you not follow your dreams and your drummer right over a cliff. For every successful dreamer, there are many unsuccessful ones. So I think we have to ask, what distinguishes these groups? Likely some critical thinking skills, which hopefully have improved over the last four years. Cognitive flexibility. I'd like to think that this, too, has been part of your Trinity education. Hard work. We better have made that part of the last four years. And the ability to recognize that occasionally your dream and your drummer are truly determined to drown you. There are times in life when the best course of action is to cut bait and find a different approach. A great challenge in life is discerning when to fight on and when to let go. The third item on my list is be afraid to be a little crazy. So remember, this is a not recommended list. If I look back at the last 13 years at Trinity, I can clearly see that some of my biggest successes here have been regularly associated with students saying to me, Dr. Becker, you are crazy. You really are crazy to think this is possible. And I have to say, there's something wonderful about working so closely with students that they feel very comfortable calling you crazy to your face. <laughs> and certainly, most people in my field consider it crazy to try and run large-scale, randomized controlled trials with 14-month follow-up without any grant funding or any graduate students. We do it here at Trinity because we don't fear being a little crazy. And our sororities have become world famous in the eating disorders field for their work in this area. My favorite phrase when someone calls me crazy, and I should note that students are not the only ones who do this, but wouldn't it be cool if we could pull it off? There would be no sorority body image initiative or female athlete body project if my student collaborators weren't willing to get a little crazy with me. I would next recommend that you not, for number four, just so you're, in case you're counting, ignore your talents. I know that sitting in front of me is an enormous pool of talent, and each of you expresses that talent in a different way. Know what you are good at and build on your strengths. But also remember that dreams and talents don't always initially align. 
Thus, it can be helpful to attend to both when carving out your place in the world. I'm not suggesting that you pursue a path simply because you're good at something if you don't particularly like it. I'd have probably ended up an unhappy chemist that way. But I've known plenty of students who became significantly happier and much more successful when they realized that they could identify dreams that fit with their talents as opposed to simply dreams that didn't fit. Now number five on my not recommended list is ignore your weaknesses. So by now you should be thinking, I shouldn't ignore my strengths or my weaknesses. That's right, you're gonna need to get a handle on both. We all have weaknesses that we can ignore with few problems. However, most of us also have weaknesses that will affect our ability to reach our goals. Ignoring your weaknesses will prevent you from achieving all that you can achieve. You leave Trinity with a tremendous gift, the gift of a fabulous education. But learning doesn't stop today, it just continues. And you will learn far more from attending to your important weaknesses than by ignoring them. For number six, I encourage you to not be afraid to fail or even be overwhelmed. We live in a world that mostly focuses on success. But flying means that you have to be willing to crash and occasionally crash hard. You can't run for office, start a company, take your dream job, tackle an education, dissertation, fall in love, have children, improve your community, or even simply try to make a difference in the world if you feel failure or even simply fear being overwhelmed. Now fortunately, by now, all of you should have had lots of experience with professors like me who just love to design courses that are made to make you feel overwhelmed. But don't expect it to stop when you leave here. Being overwhelmed should be a regular experience as you tackle new opportunities. Failing, to some degree, is almost inevitable if you reach far enough past your comfort zone. Failing is an opportunity to be smarter, try harder, reach deeper, and to learn to pick yourself up and simply try again, although you may want to choose a different strategy if you go with the be smarter option. Second to last on my not recommended list is forget that this world needs more compassion, not less. You have much to offer the world, but skills, dreams, talent, and even education will all fall short if they're not blended with compassion for others, including those who are very different from you. We live in a world that needs more social responsibility, not less, and every one of you is capable of making a dent in the problem. And lastly, please do not fail to make time for all of the little things that make life worth leading. There are many ways to build a life worth living, but if we don't save space to mindfully, here comes that psychologist again, mindfully appreciate many small ways in which life can bring you joy, your days will be that much less. So whether it's savoring a good meal with loved ones, enjoying your favorite form of exercise, playing with a child, appreciating beautiful scenery, taking a dog for a walk, engaging in a spirited debate with good friends, or for me, most recently, returning to the experience of galloping a horse at full speed across an open field, the little crazy emerges in my life frequently. Take time to enjoy all that life has to offer. I'd like to end with something I occasionally say in class. In that context, students tell me that this can contribute a little bit to feeling overwhelmed, but I think it seems appropriate as a final send off here. So to all of you, now go be brilliant. We expect nothing less from you. <laughs>